Life is made up of cells, and there are several important processes that occur in our cells. One of the most important of those processes is protein synthesis. But before you learn about protein synthesis, you need to know about the nucleotides. Just like the computer language binary, which is a two-letter language, our DNA codes in four letters. Thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine, and it uses it to code for our different traits. These are called nucleotides, and they pair up like this. Adenine pairs up with thymine, or uracil, in RNA. Thymine, or uracil in RNA, pairs up with adenine. Cytosine pairs up with guanine, and guanine pairs up with cytosine. With that said, we can now start. Protein Synthesis Guide The DNA in our chromosomes contains the instructions for making proteins. DNA contains genes a special stretch of DNA with a sequence of nucleotides that codes for something. These usually start with the codon ATG and end with the codon TAG, TGA, or TAA. In certain genes, the encoded RNA is used to synthesize proteins in a process called gene expression. For these genes, the process can be divided into two steps transcription and translation. In eukaryotic cells, transcription occurs in the nucleus, during which the DNA is used as a guide or a template to create mRNA or messenger RNA. Translation occurs in the ribosomes in the cytoplasm, during which the mRNA is used to create a polypeptide. Transcription in order to create mRNA during transcription, an RNA polymerase is required. The RNA polymerase aids the formation of the mRNA in three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. During the initiation stage, the RNA polymerase uses the promoter region as a binding site. The binding results in the DNA double helix structure to unwind and open up. During the elongation stage, the RNA polymerase moves along the length of the template DNA strand and uses it as a template to create a single strand of mRNA. As it moves along, it undoes the unwinding and closes the DNA, keeping only 10 to 20 base pairs exposed at a time. When the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator codons, it stops and the creation of the mRNA is complete. However, before the mRNA can leave the nucleus to continue on to translation, it has to undergo some modifications. The mRNA strand includes non-coding sections called introns and coding sections called exons. And before the mRNA can be used in protein synthesis, the non-coding introns have to be removed. This is done through a process known as intron splicing. During intron splicing, a complex made of proteins and RNA, known as a spliceosome, removes all the introns from the mRNA and connects the coding exons. A 5' cap and a 3' poly A tail are also added to the ends of the mRNA strand during the modification. The transcription process is then completed and the mature mRNA can then leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore and enter the cytoplasm in order to continue on to the translation process. Once the mature mRNA has left the nucleus, translation can begin. Translation begins when a small ribosomal subunit bonds with the mRNA. At this point, a tRNA or transfer RNA then comes into the picture. The large ribosomal subunit appears and binds to form the translation complex. Complementary base pairing then occurs in which the codons of the mRNA are bonded with the corresponding anticodons of the tRNA, which has an amino acid with it. During elongation, the next charged tRNA with the corresponding anticodons enters with an other amino acid. The amino acid will then form a peptide bond and the whole mRNA will slide down one codon. This process will continue to repeat till the end codon is reached. And by then, the polypeptide will leave the ribosomal complex and form a protein. To summarize this all up, protein synthesis can be divided into two steps. 
During transcription, the DNA will be used as a template to create a mature mRNA. And during translation, the mRNA will be used as a template to create a protein.